Well, today I have gone and fixed the issue with uh, yesterday's um, color variants for all of the... Uh, I just realized there's another bug I haven't fixed yet. There's supposed to be pillars right here. They're missing for some reason. But anyways, um, the, the core issue of this is fixed where when I rotated the camera, it took forever to rotate the camera because we have a separate entity for all of these different colors on the map here. What the heck? Okay, still some issues. Still some issues here to fix, but mostly fixed so far. <laughs> this is getting weirder. Whoa. Anyways, I'll figure those little issues out, but uh, the main issue of rotating and it taking forever is all fixed. And to along the way to fixing that today, um, there was an issue where it took forever to load. So not just to, to rotate the camera, but to actually just load the game. It took 10 whole seconds. Uh, so it was just forever to wait, and that's fixed as well. So um, this is uh, mostly thanks to creating a new type of cache in the model structure. Basically, in model.cpp, this loads all the different voxel models. So stuff like this, like this, uh, you know, this character right here. This is a voxel model. This gets loads loaded as all these individual voxels and colors and they're they get tinted and rotated and occluded and projected and all these kinds of things happen to them so um it makes a lot of sense to only do it do the as little as possible every time you're loading one of these because sometimes you're calling get model like thousands and thousands of times with all these different color variants and rotations at 45 degrees and 90 degrees and 180 degrees and all these different angles so that's the 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 salute the big the big win here today was doing this where um, it first tries to load from the actual cache, which is a cache of the file name and the current rotation you're rotating it at and its color. So that gets all ca into the um, into the cache, right? That's what goes into the underscore cache map. Um, but there's also a rotated cache. So if it's trying to load a color variant, which means its color is not white, it basically tries to load the white version from the rotated cache. And if it can do that, it can skip all these steps down here where it loads the box file, rotates all the voxels, projects all the voxels, occludes all the voxels, right? All that stuff gets stored in the rotated cache so it doesn't have to redo that over and over and over and over for all these different rotations and colors. So anyways, that was just a huge, huge win. It went so the the load time of the game went from like 10 whole seconds, just constantly spinning out. Sometimes the CPU or the, the profiling says that the app is actually spinning. That's how much it was actually doing. All that gets shortened down to a half second here where it, uh, well, about one second where it's loading all those models. Like that's a crazy lot of models it's loading there because it's using its cache well. So there's that. Um, as you were just seeing, there are a lot of issues I still got to fix, though. Um, namely, right away, we can see that the pillars are missing from... There's supposed to be these uh, dark pillar structures around here, around the, the edges of this. But at least it's rotating fast and loading fast now. And also, there's one more bit of code that actually made this all happen. And that was in Ent... We have a new, uh, basically we can now override data when an entity is created. So this is sort of the convenient version of creating an entity where you pass it a data path, which means like uh, player.txt, and that would load player player.txt, which would parse all its, its name component, parse its render component, parse its move component, etc. Right, that's what this method does. You can actually override all that stuff. Right, if we wanted to override the render dot color, we you know, we couldn't do that. I couldn't do that before with this engine. So, um, so now I can override data. So there's one instance where it uses this, and actually it really matters. And that's here in systems when it's loading the ground. And you, as we were just seeing, um, all that ground it has. There's just there's a lot of different separate ground entities to create this gradient of colors, this smooth gradient going from pink to white over here. There's a lot of different um, separate 
ground entities creating all of that. And so they, um, they get changed, their color gets changed here before what was happening is it would load the entity with no overrides, right? So the color was just white and then it would go, okay, e.render.color, set the color, right? And then so the render system, once it figures out, hey, it's got a different color than white, it would have to refresh the model, which would mean possibly loading different rotations and all that kind of stuff that would happen at runtime. So that was just a real, real, um, that was like, let's do it at runtime rather, rather than let's do it at load time. So basically this is doing it all at load time. It overrides the render.color and creates the, this data um, structure called overrides. Um, and that gets passed into end create. And this is the, uh, once again, the only instance that's actually using this override so far is this colored ground, but I'm sure in the future I'll find ways to use this overrides too. And then, so, and then end dot create, uh, let's see, end dot CPP, the create method, whoa. Um, it actually goes and applies those overrides so it also can apply includes, which um, like for example, player.txt has an include. Oh no, sorry, bot.txt includes player and then override adds in its own AI. Uh, but anyways, that's, that's beside the point. The point was adding this overrides thing, basically just takes the current data structure and does this plus equals on overrides. And that's a new thing in data.cpp. I just whipped up, which, uh, basically just adds two data structures together. This is the core of the meat of it right here. Um, it loops over all the children in the right hand side and goes and first checks if it if the current child exists for this current data structure. And if it does, it just adds once again until it goes and finds something that it can actually add where that where it didn't have that child in the right the left hand side and needs to add it to the right hand side. So that's really convenient. Basically, I can add two data structures together without, well, by, by basically overriding entities. So if there was a render, let's go look at player.txt again. Uh, render's got all these different like subcomponents, right? If there were, if we were overriding with the render.color, then it would basically be doing this, you know, at um, uh, before it actually loads the entity, but without having to modify the player.txt file. So there you have it. Um, lots more to do. I got to get those pillars fixed and those missing ground tiles. It's probably something simple. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you learned something. Hope this is value, valuable to you. All right. Check it later.